Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's try to solve this problem here. We have a problem with concentrated loads. There's three of them. And what we're trying to do here is find a whole bunch of things. First of all, we want to find the reactionary forces at the support points A sub Y, A sub X, E sub X, and E sub Y. We're trying to find the horizontal tension in the cable. That would be T sub naught. We want to find the height difference between point B and point C and we want to find the tension on the section from C to D. Now that's a lot of things we're trying to find and we're probably going to divide this into two separate parts. So first of all what we're going to do is find the A sub X, A sub Y and E sub Y. Of course understanding that A sub X and E sub X should be equal to one another. The horizontal components of the reactionary forces at the endpoints are going to be the same. The vertical components are likely going to be different. So let's start with finding that first. And then the second part in the next video will find the other unknowns. Well, first of all, to find A sub X and A sub Y, we're going to use the sum of the moments about some point. Let's start with point E. The sum of the moments about point E is equal to zero. And let's add those up. Well, first of all, we have these three forces and they will cause a, mm, let's see, counterclockwise moment about point E. That means positive moments. We have 8,000 multiplied times the distance from there to there, which is three meters, plus 24,000 multiplied times the distance from there to there, which is six meters, plus 12,000 multiplied times this distance, which is 8 meters. And now we have A sub X and A sub Y. Now A sub Y will cause a clockwise moment, that's a negative moment, negative A sub Y, multiplied times this distance, which is 12 meters. And then we have A sub X. A sub X also gives us a clockwise moment, so minus A sub X multiply times the distance from there to there, which is four meters. And all that should add up to zero. Now solving for a sub y and a sub x, we can move that over here. So we end up with, uh, let's write a sub x first, four a sub x plus 12 a sub y equals, and now we need a calculator. Here we have three times eight, which is 24 plus 6 times 24, which is 144, plus 8 times 12, which is 96, add three zeros, that's equal to 264,000. And there's our first equation. Of course, we're going to need a second equation to find a sub x and a sub y, the two unknowns. The nice thing about cables is that we cannot pick any other point. Let's pick point C, for example. We're going to Take the sum of the moments about point C, and of course that also equals zero, but we only need to consider just one side of the cable. We can completely ignore the other side of the cable. You can do that on fixed structures, but you can do that with cables. So starting with the first force right here, we have 12,000 newtons. And again, that's going to be a counterclockwise moment, so a positive 12,000 multiplied times the distance from there to there, which is two meters. We have a sub y, which is a, hmm, that's a clockwise moment of minus a sub y, multiplied times this distance, which is six meters. And now a sub x, notice a sub x will give you a counterclockwise moment about point c. So it's plus a sub x, multiplied times this distance right here, which is one meter. And solving that equation for a sub x and a sub y, moving that across here, that's minus a sub x plus 6 a sub y equals 24,000. Now, I want to eliminate one of the variables, and if I multiply this equation here by negative 2, I'll get negative 12. When I add these two together, my a sub y's will drop out. So let's try that. Multiply this times a negative 2. This will give me a positive 2a sub x, a negative 12a sub y, and a negative 48,000. And there's my second equation. 
If I now add these two equations together, let's see what we get. So 4 plus 2, which is 6a sub x. Plus 12 minus 12, those cancel out. And 264,000 minus 48,000, 64 minus 48, that's 6, that's 216,000. Dividing both sides of the equation by 6, so we have 216,000 divided by 6 gives me 36,000. So I can conclude that a sub x is equal to 36,000 newtons. How about a sub, a sub y? Well, I can now take that result and plug it back into any one of my equations. Let's use this equation right here. So we get minus a sub x, that would be minus 36,000. Notice I have a minus a sub x, that becomes minus 36,000, plus 6 a sub y is equal to, on the other side, a positive 24,000. Moving this over to the other side, I get 6a sub y is equal to 60,000. Of course, that would be newtons. So a sub y equals 10,000 newtons. I now have the two reactionary forces, the two components on A here. So I know that in the vertical direction, there's a force of 10,000 newtons. In the horizontal direction, there's a force of 36,000 newtons to the left. You already know that in the horizontal direction, E sub x must equal A sub x. And on top of that, that should equal the horizontal component of the tension anywhere along the cable. It means we can conclude that E sub x, which must be equal to T sub 0, the horizontal tension component in any of the sections of the cable, which is equal to A sub x, which is equal to... 36,000 newtons. Now the thing we're going to do in this part, one more, is find E sub y. And to do that, we're going to sum up the forces in the y direction, and we know they're going to add up to zero. Well, first of all, we have these three load forces. They're all acting downward, so they're negative forces. And when we add them all together, 8,000 plus 12,000 is 20,000, plus 24,000 is 44,000 in a negative direction, minus 44,000 newtons. And we have, in the vertical direction, plus A sub Y, and we have plus E sub Y. Solving that for E sub Y, we can say that E sub Y is equal to 44,000 minus A sub Y. And A sub y, we know what that is. That's equal to 10,000 newtons. So therefore, we can say that E sub y is equal to 44,000 newtons minus 10,000 newtons, which means that E sub y must equal 34,000 newtons. And now we have all the important components we were looking for in part one. We know the two reactionary components at point A, we know the two reactionary components at point E, and we know the horizontal tension component in any of the sections, which will always be equal to the X components of the reactionary forces at both sides of the cable, at both supports. In the next video, we're going to solve the other two remaining unknowns. We're going to find the tension in section from C to D, and we're going to find the height difference between B and C in the vertical direction. And that's how it's done.